Chevy Thunder. <laughs> Looks like a 04 or 05, maybe 06 Chevrolet. It's the 1500. I just dropped her off. Brought her from one of the other shops. He said he took it there. Well, let me tell you the story. What he told me is he took it to the other shop, we'll call it. Uh, they, uh, his complaint is the engine lights on and it sounds like a misfire lights on, lights flashing. He said they did a number three coil and then a number four coil and then they seen that the wires were abraded. So this is gonna be a coil near plug from the sound of it. So a coil and a spark plug wire. And then they did the wires because the wires were abraded and then you know still has the issue of this flashing light and the skip. And then they, uh, he was told at that point, once the coils were changed, the only thing they can do is change the sensor. Not sure which one, I assume maybe like a crank sensor. And then they did that and then he still has a problem. So then they told him, major electrical, you're gonna have to go to this guy in downtown Avica. And here he is. So we need to figure out what's going on with it. So we'll fire it up here. Well, she's definitely skipping. Let's put it in drive. Funny thing is though, I've drove me a lot of Chevrolets. And this does not feel like no contribution. Let's power break it slightly, shall we? I could be wrong. That, that might be a totally dead hole. Yeah, it's got a pretty good hitch in its giddy up. Let's have a little listen as we crank it over. That's always a clue. Uh, so wide open throttle, we're gonna try to crank it. Sounds pretty normal. Uh, but that can be deceptive even to the trained ear. Uh, not that I've trained my ears, but you know what I mean. So let's pull it in. And the reason that we do that crank, no start there, where we just whiz it over is because we want to hear, does she sound like she got a dead hole? <laughs> so, um, let's get a scan tool on it. Let's see what cylinder it tells us is misfiring. But it's weird at an idle. It feels more low contribution than no contribution. Why is that important to note? Simply because, you know, that could be engine mechanical you know do we have a loss of compression but not all of the compression like let's say we've got 80 pounds compression uh, so it still starts runs uh, almost fires but not quite whereas if we had no compression or no spark or no fuel then we usually have what we would consider a dead hole where it's you know hard misfire at an idle you know bum 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 cold truck shakes sometimes with a v8 though that can be deceptive um because you got seven other little guys making up for the one little guy that's not. Anyhow, enough talk, enough guessing. Let's get a scan tool and figure this baby out. Dang, down to 23%. Should have plugged her in last night. And my updates are out. I'm really slacking here, folks. Big time. Need to renew my sub. I just haven't had time yet. We're going to let this little guy go through and uh, do a system scan. As we would. Uh, I don't think so. Uh, too many questions. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, what's it want? My blood type? I don't know. I have a little gander here, and I do see the number two is brand new. You see, I just worker worker. <laughs> we rhymed that one up. Uh, let's see what we got over here. Oh wait, that's not number two. You ding dong. Start guru Chevy guy. That's number three. And number four on this side is brandy new. Brandy new wires, just like they said. And as far as the sensor, yeah, we'd have to crawl underneath to see if it did get a uh, crank sensor. However, the Altel is now booted. Survey says random cylinder misfire and a large evaporative leak. Okay, this is the one we're concerned with today. Let's hop into our misfire data, just for poop and laughter. Let's fire it up. Over do boo boo. Cylinder three and four is what it tells us. Cylinder four has the most accumulation on it. 
according to the history. So that's interesting. Just giving her a little look-see here. Like I say, she's not, she's not shaking too bad, fellas. We need to find out, is Cylinder 4 really our culprit? It appears to be here. It appears to be more 4 than 3. Uh, I don't know what the firing order is on these new Chevys. Uh, I'd be curious to know if 3 and 4 are next to each other. Therefore, giving us some false, falsies on number 3. Let's go put it in gear and see if that cleans it up a bit. Just because it doesn't feel like a multiple cylinder misfired. Let's put her in the drive. Now let's look at misfire data. Definitely more steady on 4. I'm going to give her a little throttle, a little power brake. Let me put it in reverse case the brake lines blow. Give her a little bit of throttle. And we can see there we're steady misfire on number four. So it doesn't surprise me to see it registering three and four with no load. Okay, so we're gonna blame number four. However, we need to verify that, so we wanna go uh, kill an injector here. I don't know where where that's at. Whoops. Whoop. 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 Click happy jerk. Um, nothing there. Maybe special functions. We should be able to shut off an injector. Blah blah blah. Here we go. Let's see. Okay. So what we're gonna do? Let me let me close the door here. In case we do blow a brake line, I don't want to have to put a door on this piece of junk. Let's see. So, I'm gonna power break it here a little bit. I didn't feel any change there. What? Let me kill number one. Oh yeah, big change. I don't know if I can just kill one and then it kills, turns the other one back on. You know what I'm saying? If I go two, dead. One, dead. Three, dead. So they're all enabled. But when I kill four, there is absolutely no change. Don't worry about the data. We're not looking at any data. We're just going with what we feel and what we hear. Yep. So number four is definitely the culprit. Number three, big change. You know, we probably could see it in fuel trim. I don't I don't know. I gotta show you something. Let's see, we'll kill number three. Yeah, I say our fuel trim should should start to increase. Number four, because anytime you have a dead hole, now that cylinder's just pumping air. So, um, uh, but look at this. See our fuel trim for cylinder or for bank two is really high. I mean, it just tells us we have a misfire. Does that mean it's fuel related? I can't really attest to that. There's lots of controversy on that, in my opinion. The cylinder's pumping air. It's definitely cylinder four. Let's find out why. So does that make sense to you, seeing that the fuel trim numbers are really high on this bank? So this is bank two, because uh, we have cylinders you know, two, four, six, and eight over here. I don't know the firing order, but I know that much. Uh, so when you have a cylinder that's not firing, there's no combustion, the oxygen sensor doesn't see it, therefore it sees it as pumping air and, and sees that whole bank is lean and then the fuel trims are high for that bank. Now I know uh, some guys that I'll watch or some guys that I'll see, they'll put their life on the line and say that 100% is fuel related. Yeah, it's a fuel related misfire because your fuel trim numbers are high. I would have to disagree because if I pull a spark plug wire off that side over there, even though the injector is still working, that cylinder is now pumping air and it drives the fuel numbers high on a speed density engine on one that runs with a mass airflow. Not a speed density engine, a mass airflow engine rather. So I never really banked my whole diagnosis on what type of misfire it is based on fuel trim alone. I look at it, I take it in consideration, and then I move on with my life. So what we need to know now is number four, you know, do we have spark? Do we have a good spark plug? Do we have compression? You know, is this mechanical? 
Is this ignition related or is this fuel related? Brand new coil, brand new wire. Doesn't mean they're good. Sounds like they've been chasing this thing around. So all I want to do uh, is quickly verify, you know, do we have spark? Is the spark making it to the plug? Is it sparking? If it is, great, let's move on. And just like if you're in the business of skinning cats, uh, there's more than one way to do that. And then what we're gonna do is we're going old school. So, uh, spark plug tester. Mother, that's hot. Come on, baby. Uh, just simply because I can have this plug wire off uh, faster than I can get out a scope and turn it on. So what we want to know is, is this coil firing? And uh, we're just gonna hook this to something. And then we're gonna sit here, we're gonna start it up, see if it's firing. If it is, um, let's have a look -see. The spark plugs are brand spanking new. So I am highly doubting that we have a bad spark plug, but we can and we're not gonna interrupt our process for an assumption. Cause you know that whole process, assumption and me and you and something to do with an a-hole and stuff like that. So let's see. Can she jump the big gap right there? Let me go fire it up. Oh, yes, sir. Dilly doo doo doo. Oh, shivvy. You leave me on the livy. Just made that up. So we have spark out of the coil. Is it occurring at the right time? We don't know. More than likely because all the other seven spark plugs seem to be firing at the same time. So what we could do now, uh, if we're so inclined to do so, is we could pull the spark plug out and say, hey, did these guys just have some bad luck and get a spark plug that's you know carbon track down the side? Easily could see that on the scope. If we had a scope, we hooked it on the wire. We could see, are we firing inside the cylinder? Are we firing outside the cylinder? Does it appear to be a lean condition? There's a lot we could gather from secondary uh, waveforms. Um, and sometimes that's good to do, especially when we find out like, hey, this thing's just got a bad injector. Um, then you could take your time to hook your scope up and say, well, what does this look like on a super lean cylinder? And then kind of commit that to memory and use that in your diagnostic arsenal uh, in the future when you get another car in that has a misfire that let's say it's not as easy to get to the plug in the wire But you can get a scope on it You can look at that secondary waveform and say hey this one's rich this one's lean This is firing outside the cylinder So on and so forth, but for this purpose on uh, this video, we're gonna yank the plug to Have a visual inspection and then if it looks fine just swap it with another cylinder if misfire stays on this cylinder We know we have spark. We know the plugs good now let's look at engine mechanical and fuel. Old school. So let's pop this uh, <coughs> plug out down here. I know you can't see much, but it's just a standard plug removal. So we'll get this out because some uh, AC Delcos, I tell you what, brand new out of the box, they do have a tendency to get some carbon tracking on them or be cracked down the porcelain. So we'll take her out. She's white and shiny. Hotter than a banshee, covered with slime. Hi Luna, come here, come here baby. Hi pumpkin, what's the matter baby? Say hi. Here's Luna, she's just coming in, it's a night out on the town. Take one side. I just gave the plug a full cat scan and it came back good. But that's not always a good test. Cause what do cats know? So now, So typically, this is where I should have just used a scope because guess what? The plug wire is super attached to the spark plug down there. So we're going to take that off. Now we're going to take our spark plug wire. This is from the number two. And we'll pull it back in. Back in the hole. Everything's pretty hot. And then we're just going to swap that plug because we know we're not having a problem with the number two cylinder. So you see what I'm saying? We'll do the old swap -roo. It's called Swaptronics. It's not as bad as Trignostics because it is kind of like Trignostics. But it doesn't cost us anything except a little bit of time. And I'm doing this solely for your education. Educational purposes. 
And as silly as it sounds, uh, even though many uh, folks in the automotive industry, diagnosticians they like to be called, uh, would scoff at this approach. It is it is an approach that a uh, uh, you know that not only can be used in the shop, but uh, you know a DIYer can do themselves simply because these parts are all similar. The coils are the same, the plugs are the same, the wires are the same. And if you don't have access to, as Scotty Kilmer calls them, your big fancy scan tools, then this is an approach that a, a guy could take. Um, and, and sometimes, even if you do have your big fancy scan tools, you can uh, still use this approach uh, simply because it works. And um, it's really limited by access to like and similar products on the vehicle, you know. Are the coils a real pain in the hoo-hoo to get to? Are the plugs a, you know, son of a mother to swap around? You know, stuff like that where this here, like I say, is pretty quick. And it's a good eliminator. And I mean, you can take it as far as, you know, if you had to, you know, swapping injectors. But at that point, it gets kind of silly. Um, but sim simple stuff like this, you know, is a coil, is a plug, is a wire? Nope, it's not ignition. Doesn't appear to be. Could it be still? Yeah. But what are the odds, you know? Head your bets, baby. You guys can't see crap down here, so. That's me trying to do Kilmer impersonations. Make sure she's locked on. She locked and loaded. And of course, this whole thing could go sour because if this had old crappy wires and the wire breaks, and use your judgment, I guess, is what I'm getting at. Fired up. Still skipping. Oops, we don't want to go to active tests. We'll just go right back to the live data. Engine data. We'll go to the misfire. Oh, let me power break it a little, but it looks like we're still having an issue with numeral four. Still got the problem in number four, so there we go. Process of elimination. We have a pretty good idea what it's not. Now this is where I could get burned by going DIY-ish on it, is listening to it crank over. Here we can have a listen again, more inside, right? Listen closely. So cranking over like that sounds pretty normal. I could get burned. If I had my scope out and I was looking at secondary ignition waveforms, I'd boom, throw it on the, uh, you know, negative battery post or positive or whichever, or hook up the leads, however we want to do it. We do a relative compression test and say, yep, yeah, relative to each other, they all look the same. In my experience, uh, I'm gonna skip that, which I shouldn't, and we're gonna do an injector balance test because we have our scan tool hooked up. So what we'll do is we'll pressurize uh, the injectors. With the scan tool, it has a built-in injector balance test for these Chevrolets and we'll turn on each injector and we'll see how much pressure it drops uh, when we command those injectors on. And we're gonna go right for the gusto. We're not gonna do them in order. We're just gonna go down that bank. We might do cylinder, you know, three, four, and five and see if cylinder four is not flowing as much fuel as the others. Oh, that's kind of funny. Just had a uh, fellow stop in a local farmer down the road. He's got one of these Chevrolets and uh, it's, he's bleeding out his hand pretty good <laughs> and asked me to change his number seven spark plug for him because as you know these AFM engines in the later models are complete garbage and of course they burn oil and follow up the spark plugs and stuff so he keeps spark plugs with them and keeps changing out the number seven every six months or so but he's a little frustrated this morning <laughs> so I just went on the parking lot and changed his uh, number seven spark plug so he could keep driving his Chevrolet so what we're going to do now we're going to install this little guy. So we're going to put on our fuel pressure gauge. Now I could be wrong here, folks. Or we could be right. I think those are lyrics to a song. Oh. So get that there. And then, like I say, we're going to take, turn the key on. 
and the scan tool has an automated process of turning on the fuel, letting it build pressure, and then turning on an injector for a given period of time, or pulses, which equate to time. And then we're gonna see, so we're at 60, then we're gonna kick it on and watch it and see how many pounds it drops per each time it kicks on. So let's do that, let's get something right on. So some people ask us, uh, so we'll click fuel injector balance, like, oh, here I go, I don't have a, I don't have a big fancy scan tool. <laughs> That's okay, because if you're doing an injector balance test, it doesn't matter, because you can buy a standalone device to do that, a uh, little injector pulsing tool. Uh, I, I don't know if K-Tool makes it, I have to look at my box. They're quite inexpensive, and you can get them on Amazon, and then they're universal for all you know electric fuel injectors like this, not GDI. Um, but this style electric solenoid type injector i don't know what else to call it so let's go injector number three uh let's see here so she just built up fuel that was quick too much looking too much talking so i get yeah i need to do that again uh so when i push the injector button it's going to build up fuel pressure we're going to look see where it's at record that and then watch the drop so let's do let's say let's do cylinder five hit the button 48 to 34 so 48 psi to 34 psi and that was number five so now we'll do number one i'll let it build up there's 48 to 35 so 48 to 35 and that was number one now let's do our offending injector let's do number four just to see where that's at 48 nothing there's no clicking there's no nothing let's do number six 48 to 34 48 to 34 PSI, and that's number six. Now, just for grins and giggles, let's do number four again. 48 PSI. Oh, injector has already been tested, unable to restart during this ignition cycle. Okay, so it won't run the test twice because it doesn't want to swap the cylinder. So uh, we have a pretty good idea, though, from watching that. Either that injector has some electric problems going to it, or the injectors just pooched which I would imagine if that injector was unplugged let's say it's open circuited broken power feed or a broken uh, control wire I would imagine we would set an injector code uh, like a P0204 I think that would be an injector code um, which we don't have so I assume that electrically it is there and it is the computer sees it as having continuity through it back on the control wire therefore the injector itself is probably garbage so let's just test that theory uh, we are going to uh, back out of here and we're going to simply just do that by starting it running it and using our test light uh, or we could use a noid light so let's do that so busted out the old noid light set we're going to unplug this injector here get our harness up out of the way Get the little blue clipper up out of the way. These things can be a real piss pot. There we go. There she is, baby. So then what we could do at this point is we could check, do we have power here? And then do we have control, pulsing control? Uh, or we could just shove a, a Noid light in there and fire it up and see if it blinks which this one doesn't fit quite right and I don't want to spread the pin so let's just start it and see a couple things you know do we get a code for it which that would be nice and do we uh, have a blinky light which would be even nicer so stand by now we're going to go to codes and we're going to see hopefully we threw an injector code injector control circuit PO200 Surprised it's not specific to that cylinder, but what do I know? And we have a pulsing 
don't know if you guys can see it here. I'll turn off the light. Uh, let me see what you see. And we have a pulsing noise. Like, can you see that? I don't know. You're gonna have to trust me. But we have a pulsing noid light, so that tells me, you know, we have the ability to fire this injector. So, that's that. Let's uh, shut this junker off. So now, what we'll do is let's test our injector. It must have some sort of resistance through it, or continuity through it. Because um, a lot of people right now are like, oh, you're an idiot. You can't test an injector with a noid light, blah, blah, blah. I understand that. I also understand that that Noid light draws about a half of an amp. These injectors probably draw about three quarters of an amp. And it lit up what seems to be about normal. So calm down. It's a close enough test. If we had no blinking at all, then we would be concerned. So we're going to check uh, the injector here. I would expect probably 14 ohms or so. We can always compare it to a known good. But if, let's say we're, if we're higher than 15, we'll, we'll do something here. Or lower or higher or whatever, but let's see. We check this injector and the survey says, come on, baby. 14.4 ohms, 14.3 ohms. In my opinion, that is perfect. And that, folks, is why we have no, um, no code for it, because that is what I would consider to be perfect. That's really good. Um, let's do this. Let me turn the key on and show you something. We are K-O-E-O, -E key on engine off. We're gonna pop back into our special functions. We're gonna go hit the cancel. We're gonna go to fuel injector balance. And then we're gonna go to cylinder four. And we're gonna make sure that our balance test is working properly where it fires this injector. Power up and then should fire. Bing, 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 bing. See how nice and bright that is? We are 100% beyond a shadow of a doubt making the call on a bad fuel injector. It is mechanically stuck shut. Electrically, it is perfect. Therefore, we have no codes. But as we could see during our balance test when we did that, it cannot flow fuel. Even though we have control to it, it will brightly light a Noid light, which draws almost as much current as a fuel injector. Um, that's that. We could easily put a scope on that and we could see our inrush current. We could watch our ramp build up, but we would never see a pinnel hump in it where the injector normally would open, where we would see that mechanical movement of the fuel injector. We will not see in this case. Uh, perhaps I could show you that. Uh, for you guys who are scope users, where we could have thrown a scope on that, scrutinized that waveform, and I would be willing to bet that we will not see mechanical movement on it. Uh, so let's uh, let's do that, just so everybody's happy. We'll do it right here at the injector. That way, I don't have to uh, find a fuse. Yeah. So let me grab a capture here. Uh, and then I'll, I'll see if I can show you what's up. Uh, we'll see if this works. We're going to try a good cylinder. We're upside down. Are we upside down? A lot of interference here. Um, okay. Let me, uh, let me try to set a trigger here. Uh, edge triggering, okay. Okay, so we got a trigger set up. Uh, we need to change our time because we want to be able to see what we can see. Trigger's in a bad spot. Let's uh, put our trigger up here higher. Let's get a little more time. I want a little better definition here. And then uh, let's change our scale here to one amp. 
Whoa, baby! Click on that. Bring her down. Um, that is on a good cylinder. Let me change my time yet one more time. We'll go to 500 microseconds here. I was really hoping to see a more clearly defined pinnel opening. We can see a little sag right there. So this is as current's being induced in that coil. And typically when that pinnel opens, when you get movement of that physical movement, we have a little reduction in current, which usually it's more of, of a clearly defined pump, as you will. And then of course the injector is on and then the injector shuts off. So I see slightly here, this may not be a good demonstration. So that's a good cylinder. Let's go to our bad one. Now this is our bad one. And I cannot definitively look at that and then look you in the face and tell you that yes, I would make the call based on that waveform uh, because I'd be lying to your face. So there's, there's not much that I can tell you there, folks. Uh, I was hoping that was gonna be a better demonstration. Oops. However, this is perhaps why we, uh, why we test things multiple ways. So that's a little frustrating. Hoping that was gonna be better for you. I don't see a clearly defined pinnel hump looking at current. Um, usually it's more defined. So that's a bad cylinder. That's our dead hole. This is our good hole. Must be, I didn't, uh, didn't zero this little guy. Something's happening there. There we go. So again, that is the good one. And that is the bad one. I'm looking at the leading edge here. And well, frankly, I'm not gonna scrutinize it too heavily because well, we already know what's wrong. Sorry for such a poor demonstration with that. I honestly thought that we would see something more definitive uh, with the amp clamp. But it's also a great learning opportunity because like I say, you know, we've proved the injector doesn't flow. It's got everything it needs to make it flow. Um, you know, it's not engine mechanical, nothing. You know, it's simply injectors receiving its command, coils getting saturated, you know, electrically it works, it's physically stuck. So, you know, take that opportunity, grab your scope. You know, hey, we got a known bad. We got seven known goods. Look at them. Can I see the difference in the current flow uh, with those? You know, look at the secondary ignition. Can I identify uh, a lean cylinder? Like I know this cylinder is dead, it's gone. It has no fuel. What does that spark look like? And can I discern that waveform, that scope pattern from a cylinder that's firing good? And then kind of like, you know, save that. Like this cylinder we know for a fact, this waveform has no fuel. This, this cylinder is pumping air. How does it look? You know, do we see this huge lean spike at the end of the burn line? You know the secondary ignition um you know what's that do to the overall you know kv spike um, is it easier for that spark to uh, ionize in a lean cylinder versus a rich cylinder you know you can start to see that take some of that stuff you've learned in classes and kind of apply it like yeah or do you look at it like we just looked at this and been like you know i don't know i would have never been able to make the call i would have never made the call looking at using this scope with this clamp in that fashion and say, yes, that is a bad injector. We could have done other tests. We could have used the scope and a pressure transducer to look at injector drop on each cylinder. Cause even just doing what we did, we see there's a PSI or two difference between a couple of them that we just tested. So lots and lots of different ways. Like I say, if you're in this uh, cat skin in business, you already know it. There's more than one way to do things. So, uh, but there's only one way for you to do something for me, and that's for you to head to that comment section, the questions, the comments, the concerns. I'm gonna get an injector for this fella, and you're gonna go down there and ring the bell, the Insty, the Facebook. And just remember viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.